there's no denying how awesome Goku is. He cemented his legacy as an anime legend several dozen times over. The only problem with him is that he's so awesome that he often overshadows the little guy. It becomes easy to overlook the hard-working, salt-of-the-earth martial artist slash professional athlete who was there from the beginning. Yes, we're talking about the one and only Yamcha. Sure, most fans and even the series itself consider Yamcha to be more or less of a joke nowadays. He's often used as a literal and figurative punchline. Either he gets beaten by the bad guys to prove how tough they are, or he's only there to make a fool of himself. Still, despite all this, Yamcha deserves respect. There have been several times throughout the anime where he's proven that he's a true hero. Here are 10 times Yamcha was an underestimated hero. The First Wolf Fang Fist The first time young Goku met Yamcha, he was a young martial artist. Yamcha, on the other hand, was a roguish warrior with really awesome hair. Seriously, 80s Yamcha could have done shampoo commercials. In the early days of the anime, he was basically the Han Solo of Team Dragon Ball. He was a selfish anti-hero with a secret heart of gold and a furry sidekick. You add all that together in a pop culture calculator and it equals Han Solo 95% of the time, all the time. The moment that cemented him as the anime's resident bad boy was the first time he unveiled his special move. Despite the fact that Yamcha has a sword and looked like some sort of samurai pirate, Goku wasn't too threatened. That all changed when he introduced the young warrior to his wolf fang fist attack. It literally sent Goku flying through several rock faces. Sure, it's not a powerful move by today's standards, but in those days it was basically the falcon pounce of Dragon Ball. But in Goku's defense, he was really hungry. Yamcha saves the gang Blazing the trail for Dragon Ball antagonists like Tien, Piccolo, and Vegeta, Yamcha set aside his differences with the gang and joined them. By the end of the anime's first arc, he was basically the second male lead. Sorry, Oolong. Things got really hairy when Goku accidentally turned into a great ape during a full moon. His mindless rampage threatened to crush all the rest of the group, but Yamcha rushed to their rescue. Goku may be the big hero of the show, but Yamcha was the hero that night. If it wasn't for him, we would have been denied years of Bulma, Buar, and Oolong. Well, those characters may not be that great, but Yamcha's still a hero. Yamcha saves Bulma from traffic. The gang splits up after the first arc to go train for the anime's first tournament. The show focuses on Goku and Krillin training with Master Roshi, but doesn't really show much of Yamcha. That all changes when Bulma forgets the first rule of walking across the street. You always look both ways. She drops an orange midway through the street and somehow doesn't notice the truck barreling towards her. Isn't she supposed to be a genius? Luckily, Yamcha leaps to her rescue by grabbing her out of the way. Evidently, he spent the time since we last saw him training in the wilderness. And that's basically the manliest sentence ever. He was Bear Grylls before Bear Grylls. It was such a valiant moment that we'll go ahead and ignore the half-beard he was trying out. James Franco can't even pull off that look, man. Yamcha vs. The Invisible Man There's no getting around the fact that Yamcha has a pretty bad fight-winning record. Mostly, he's used to show how strong the villain is by getting beaten to a pulp. Not only that, but he eventually loses that position in the group to Krillin. He gets so disrespected by the series that often fans forget these moments when he brought the pain. One of the best examples of that was when he fought see-through, the Invisible Man. Is that, is that really his name? Does his birth certificate literally say see-through on it, or is that like his fighter name? You know, like, um, kind of like Dwayne See-Through Johnson, Dwayne the Glass Johnson. At first, it looks like Yamcha is going to get creamed in that fight. Without the ability to see his enemy, he ends up taking quite a few hits. Yamcha then uses his hearing to land several blows. The fight ends when Krillin pours tomato juice on him, revealing him to Yamcha. In the Japanese version, it's much less kid-friendly. We're, we're, just, we're just gonna go with that. Yamcha takes him out with a well-timed wolf thing fist, and old see-through surrenders the match. The best part about being invisible is probably the fact that nobody can see his wolf-shaped bruises. Yamcha vs. Tien Dragon Ball's first tournament was epic, but it didn't have anything on the second one. That was the one that introduced the fearsome three-eyed martial artist Tien and his lovable buddy Chaozu. Do all martial artists have plucky sidekicks or just the ones from Dragon Ball? Tien's fight with Goku may have been the main event, but his battle with Yamcha was undeniably more epic. It's clear pretty quickly that Tien is going to be the winner of the fight, but Yamcha refuses to give in. No one watching really seems to think Yamcha has a chance, but he stands his ground anyway. He even manages to make it seem like the two are evenly matched for a while. 
things really look like they're going to turn when Yamcha manages to pop off a Kamehameha wave in Tien's direction. Unfortunately, Tien shocks everyone by turning the blast back on Yamcha. He narrowly manages to escape, but this opens him up to Tien's final barrage. The whole match ends when Tien unnecessarily breaks Yamcha's leg. Yamcha vs. Home Invaders Despite the fact that they're basically superheroes, none of the Z fighters fight a lot of crime. For the most part, their attention is focused almost exclusively on alien threats and the occasional need to get a driver's license. There's a scene where a group of criminals get some kung fu justice distributed to them. In the original anime, a group of burglars decide to attack Kame House. They bust inside and assume that they've just found the easiest score of their lives. Instead, they get beaten to a pulp. An injured Yamcha rushed to the defense of Bulma and made quick work of the would-be robbers. He also got to team up with Launch, who joined in on the fun. Yamcha the Baseball Star If you don't own a giant corporation like Bulma, it's smart to have a backup plan. Strangely enough, Yamcha's backup plan is a dream for a lot of people. Professional athletes train their entire lives to be able to play the game against the greats. For Yamcha, this is a boring day job. He treats it like he's a character in office space. Compared to the thrills of martial arts tournaments and world-saving, bro ball's nothing. It's easy to think of Yamcha as unimpressive when you compare him against Goku and the other heroes. If you compare him against normal people, though, he's incredibly impressive. Not only was Yamcha able to play professional ball without really trying, he was amazing at it. He was able to hit a ball harder than the greatest ball players could ever dream, even when giving it like 20% at best. Yamcha takes on the Ginyu Force Yamcha got to be a little cooler in the afterlife. The gang all met up at King Kai's house and went through Goku's training process. They did get to show off their new skills when the Ginyu Force arrived, fresh off their big defeats from the Namek gang, i.e. Goku. Unluckily for the Ginyu boys, the King Kai training really paid off. Yamcha and crew batted them around King Kai's planet like they were volleyballs. Fans seemed to overlook just how impressive this was. Yamcha was the guy who got blown up by a Cyberman but in an incredibly short amount of time was able to take down Raccoon. This was the same warrior who was able to beat Vegeta to a pulp. And we're talking Namek Saga Vegeta, which is like 20 Saiyan Saga Vegetas. So that's saying something. It's doubly impressive when you see that it didn't take much effort for him to do so either. Too bad he didn't get to show off these skills again in the arc. Yamcha and Tien vs. Cell Jr. The android in Cell Sagas weren't good times for old Yamcha. It should have been the best time of his life. He got a ticket back from the afterlife and had a second chance at a romance with Bulma. That sounds like a happy ending right there. Of course, it didn't really go that way. Pretty early on in the arc, we see that Bulma's had a son off screen. Gohan understandably assumes that the baby's Yamcha's. In a pretty characteristic manner, he ends up putting his foot right into his old mouth. As we all know, Bulma ended up choosing Vegeta over Yamcha. This fact even seems to cause Yamcha a great deal of pain and embarrassment. He even has to walk away and sulk about it. The whole thing really makes sense, though. Vegito was more or less the person responsible for sending him to the afterlife in the first place. To be brought back to life only for your enemy to end up with the love of your life is pretty painful. That's probably why he ended up getting such a horrible haircut. Luckily, Yamcha did get a small moment to shine. In a twist that shocked nobody, Cell ended up breaking his own Cell Games rules. He made a series of ugly Mini-Me-style Cell Jr. clones and sent them to attack people. Tien and Yamcha bravely jumped into action despite having been benched most of the arc. You could even think of this as a redemption for what happened to him with the Cybermen. Probably his secret was to imagine all of them were Vegeta. Yamcha beats gods at baseball. He finally got a chance to shine when the all-powerful god-leveled characters met him on his turf, the baseball field. At first, it really didn't seem like he stood a chance. After years of having to watch Bulma with Vegeta, he finally got a chance to face him when the Saiyan Prince pitched to him. Bulma even wished both of them good luck, making him blush. This was his chance at redemption at last. It didn't turn out that way, though. Vegeta tossed the ball right into his abdomen, making him double over in pain. That's some hardcore embarrassment, but Yamcha didn't let that stop him. He proved himself to be a pretty cunning player when he tried to steal bases and go for home. Too bad this didn't work out for him either. Vegeta managed to take him out again. When Beerus and Jamba got distracted by their personal rivalry, though, Yamcha took his chance to win the entire game. He may not have gotten a chance to save the universe or defeat his rival, but he did get to win a baseball game against the literal gods. That's gotta feel good at least. There's no arguing that the poor guy deserved it. And there you have it. 10 times where Yamcha proved definitively that he is and always will be awesome. 
Which moment was your favorite? Were there any amazing Yamcha moments from the series that we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to CBR.